After President Muhammadu Buhari's intervention at the weekend in the crisis rocking the ruling All Progressive Congress, it appears that the party's feuding governors have agreed to sheath their swords for now, for the sake of the party's national convention scheduled for March the 26th. However, the question of who its members should settle for as the next national chairman of the APC appears to be up in the air, as President Buhari was said to have denied endorsing anyone to lead the party for the next four years. President Buhari's position contradicts earlier reports that he had endorsed former Governor Abdullahi Adamu of Nasarawa State to emerge as the next chairman of the APC. Those reported to have mounted pressure on the president to jettison Adamu as his preferred candidate for chairman are members of the Defunct Congress for Progressive Change, CPC, one of the four political parties which coalesced in 2013 to form the APC. Persons against the choice of Adamu would rather that he contest for the post, would rather uh, uh, prefer that a contest for the post of chairman be thrown open, which will throw the zoning formula for the party's elective offices into disarray. Now, joining us to discuss the recent turn of events in Nigeria's ruling party and what its members should be focused on in order to avoid the landmines that led to the PDP's implosion before the 2015 elections is Senator Ali Ndume, the ranking senator representing Bono South in the National Assembly and former Senate Majority Leader. Good morning, Senator Ndume, and thank you for joining us. Yeah, good morning, viewers. Thank you for joining us. Well, quickly, uh, Senator Ndume, um, just to ask you, what's your take on all the uh, developments within your party, uh, the APC? Um, do you think that there are fears still to be expressed about the March 26th uh, convention? And uh, who is your favorite candidate for the position of chairman of the party? Well, first of all, is. Um what is happening is in the party is uh, really unfortunate and also worrisome. But uh, uh, it, this is not unusual in politics uh, because uh, it's all about interest. Uh, the concern was that uh, the, the interest of individuals uh, is being allowed to uh, override the general interest of the party. But fortunately, uh, the president, who is the leader of the party, has um, uh, responded by, uh, war by uh, issuing out a statement last week. And uh, as for the candidates, uh, the, uh, we have passed that stage to me uh, since uh, the candidates have shown interest and it's in the, co in the constitution of the party that uh, there are three ways that you do election into various offices. One is by consensus. Uh, the second one is by indirect uh, primaries, and then the other option is by direct primaries. Uh, we haven't gotten there yet, and the leadership is still talking, and the president is um, in charge very much. Uh, and I'm very hopeful now with the recent development, uh, especially the statement issued over the weekend by the, the president, I think will get everybody into line and uh, we do the right thing. So um, for preferred candidates, uh, the, the candidates that have uh, indicated interest depends on where the chairmanship is zoned to. I'm, I am I am aware, <clears throat> not really sure, that the party uh, candidature for the national chairman has been zoned to North Central. And if that is the case, you have about four candidates or five contesting uh, for that uh, position there. And of course, my position about the best candidate for the party at this time is to have somebody that can actually stand on his own, a man of his own, a man that cannot be manipulated, a man that can talk to anybody, a man that can serve as a leader or, 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 or father to all, so that uh, you can get the people around to listen and then uh, take a decision based on maturity and what will be uh, better for all of us. Well, that um, national chairman will definitely need a lot of the skills that you've mentioned. 
with the current um, friction within the party. Yeah. Now that President Buhari has intervened, I'm sure it wasn't some kind of magic wand that he's waved and suddenly everybody's okay. Where, for you, are the areas that, you know, danger still lurks for the APC with regards to becoming a more unified structure? Well, the, the small problems that we had previously, I think it's a result as a result of uh, the president's nature. Uh, our president is an introvert and somebody that wants to, or is expecting everybody to do things the way he does it or the way he thinks. And he, he gets surprised if people do the wrong thing, uh, especially if it is uh, deliberate. Uh, that is one. Uh, but he normally stands up to the occasion when things, before things get out of hand. And I think that is what he did now. Uh, I don't want us to be talking on individuals and candidates because that's not going to help matters. But we all in APC know, among those candidates that have indicated interest, and including the candidate that is, you know, that, uh, uh, that is Abdullah Idamu that came into the race uh, lately. And they, everybody knows why he came into that race. And we all agree and know that in every party, if there is leadership as we have in APC, then what the leader uh, indicates or what the generality of the people indicate in consultation is normally what uh, will, will, will prevail. So we, we will get there, we will cross the bridge when we, we get there. Uh, but I am of the view that it is not just possible for the statement made that the president will not be interested in who becomes the national chairman of the party. I, for one, for example, would go with, the pre with any candidate that the president prefers. And it is not possible under this circumstance for the president not to be interested in the candidate that will be uh, our national chairman or even our uh, presidential candidate. It, it is not, it is, it is not, uh, it is not done like that. So we are waiting and we will go with the preferred candidate of Mr. President. So I will, I will go with that. Let so, me put it that way. So I'd like to ask you this. You said you'll go with the preferred candidate of Mr. President. Uh, is it safe to say that the yes. president... No, hang on a minute, sir. Is it safe to say that the president <clears throat> has been misled a lot lately? as regards the crisis in the APC. Because it was a certain group of governors it, that met with him that told him that, oh, Puni must go, without thinking of the consequences that will come out of it, without thinking of the fact that they have to give him a seven days notice. And the president acceded to their request. Now, another group, which is the Buni group, has been able to wriggle their way out of this, and now they are staying. So when you say you will align with the president, are you not sure that some other group will come again and mislead the president into making another decision as regards this? Well, I don't think uh, so. Actually, the president is uh, a listening person. He listens to both sides. And um, what you're talking about is actually like strange to me because I'm not uh, aware of uh, two groups in the governor's forum particularly. Oh, yes, there are two uh, groups, sir. And uh, whichever group... They... There are two groups. Yeah, I, I, I understand. I have been here. Uh, so how many of them? Some are saying the other one are 14 and the other one... No, the, the, have, first, uh, the, first one, the first one are 19 governors. And the other group, I think about four or five governors, Nine. they are called the Yahoo group. The Yahoo governors group are said by Governor Akere Dulu. So there are two different groups, yes. The first, the 19 governors that so, met well, with the they, president it, and the Yahoo group. So, uh, but uh, if that is the case, uh, uh, when you have 19 people on one side and four people on the other side, and we are in democracy, you know that uh, the voice of the 19 or the position of the 19 will prevail. Uh, the four can have their say, but definitely the 19 will have its way. Well, beyond uh, the... Uh... And I think the 19 are those... Are, I think the 19 are those that will, just like me... Will, will, will go with what the president prefers. 
See, the president is the leader of our party and the president of the country and commander in chief. And as I said, the president cannot say that he does, he does, it doesn't matter who becomes the national chairman. No, yeah, that, 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 that is not the case. Even uh, Adam Oshomole, our pre previous president, the president's input were, or deter determined his uh, emergence as our national chairman then. And even Buni, it was the president, the president's uh, preference. It was the president's preference. Not that our, all these, uh, our 22 governors cannot be, 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 be the, uh, the caretaker chairman. But the president preferred Buni for whatever reason. And we agreed, and uh, Buni has done well uh, for all this period, except for this, this little snag, which I think will be fixed. And uh, we'll move on. Because we can't have, afford to go into election uh, in a, in a, with a divided house. And uh, if we have uh, 19 governors on one side and then only uh, four on the other side, I think it is easier for the worst to get over that. And in fact, at, at worst, if democracy is, and that is what we are doing, will prevail. 19 against four, of course, uh, means that the 19 will have its way. And uh, of course, the four will have its say. Well, beyond the convention, Senator Ndume, will it be uh, correct to say that effectively the APC has zoned the uh, presidency for 2023 to the south? And we've had quite a number of persons from the south well, uh, who have shown interest. And uh, uh, just to take your thoughts on uh, the presidential race for 2023 within your party. Well, I'm one of those that... Uh was uh, was first to to advocate for the shift it's it's it's, it's just uh, in the interest of justice equality and fair and fairness for the south to produce the president i said it before that in the south we have three geopolitical zones uh, the south 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 east and uh, uh, southwest uh, so it it is now left to those zones to produce the candidates or to have the candidates that will run. But so far, I think that everybody is in support in APC of uh, zoning or it has already in principle zoned the uh, presidency, pre presidency to, uh, to the south. Where in the south now will depend on the outcome of the presidential convention to be held after the national convention to elect the national officers. Well, that's what I'm sure a lot of people want to know. Can you tell us the factors that will determine where in the South it would go? Well, I don't know about that, uh, actually. In the, when Buhari emerged as, uh, as the, our presidential candidate in 2015, the presidency was a uh, zone to, in principles, to the North and uh, himself and um, Konkoso from Northwest contested. Then uh, uh, Atiku then from the Northeast I also participated and contested. Um, and then Sam, late Sam Indaz uh, uh, from the North Central also contested. Uh, it was only uh, Okorocha that uh, I can say not contested but participated because as I then he had his ticket for the governor and um, despite the fact that uh, it has been zoned, he had the, the right to, uh, pa to participate. And he did participate. When he, he didn't uh, win, he went back and picked his gubernatorial ticket then. And uh, so th I think this is what will play out. Uh, already uh, candidates from South uh, West have indicated uh, interest. You know, we can hear, we hear of names. And uh, in the south, south too, the same thing. In the southeast, also candidates have already uh, indicated their interest to to co to contest for the presidency. Right. So, uh, can you hear me, sir? Yeah. Good. Uh, yeah, I can hear you. Good. So, who would you be supporting out of all these candidates? Will it be the candidates probably the president supports? And what will inform that? Uh, we've got...
Professor yeah, Yemiro Shibaju, one. we've got uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, and mm -hmm. we've got other candidates. In fact, there's a story just coming out of the Daily Trust this morning, saying that President, uh, uh, Vice President Shibaju has talked to President Buhari uh, and, the, and told him his intention of running for presidency. That's the Daily Trust reporting that this morning. They said some of their sources did say that. So, okay. uh, so who would you support? As I told you, I, Buhari is our leader. He is the president, and uh, he, definitely he must uh, he must he must be the one that is in the better position uh, amongst the contestants in the APC to support uh, a, you know select you know a, a preferred candidate as his successor, and um, I, as one of those that support Mr. President or. The, some of us even call us the Buharis. Uh, it will, it will, uh, it will, I won't, I won't go, you know, a, a, a different way with uh, Mr. President on that. Um, if if the president decides, or if I know of his preferred candidate from the south, then I will, I will go with that. Okay, very quickly, uh, Senator Alin Dume. I know you, you've been very vocal about the security situation in the country, particularly uh, in Borono State. Are you satisfied with the claims of uh, success uh, that government has been claiming, uh, uh, has been uh, talking about, uh, particularly in your part of the uh, country? Or do you think there are still areas of omission that would need to be addressed? Actually, um, the effort being put by the government and the soldiers on ground is very encouraging. And we have witnessed successes that have even led to many of them, thousands of the, the, uh, the, the insurgents or the terrorists surrendering to uh, the government. That is a good, very impressive development. Um, but I, I, there is still a, a, a long, not really long way to go, but... If they sustain the tempo now, and, but, but, but most importantly, I kept on saying this, that war is not cheap, especially where we have to buy all the materials that is used to uh, prosecute the war uh, from outside in dollars. And you know what our Naira is against dollar these days, so it's not cheap. The army and the other security agencies to me, who is the chairman of our army and have interactions and know what is going on there, that as long the, 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 the army needs more equipment, especially more ammunition, more equipment in order to prosecute the war. If the army has what they get, have what they need, I can assure you that they can get over this in the shortest possible time. Let's even say like uh, before the rainy seasons, People, uh, rainy season, people will be able to go back to, to their farms. But the biggest challenge the armed forces uh, have in this country is equipment, which is grossly inadequate up to now. And also the personnel are not adequate. In a population of over 200 million, uh, the Nigerian army, as of now, are not up to 200,000. The Nigerian police are not up to 400,000. In fact, the security agencies in Nigeria put together, whether it's immigration, everybody, uh, civil defense and uh, all that, are not up to one million. In uh, Egypt, uh, Cairo, in Egypt, uh, the Niger their police are over one million. And they are, they are half of our population. I think they are over 100, uh, just over 100 uh, million. But they have over one million police. And we have our youth there that are willing to, you know, fight for this country and defend it. And uh, this is what I really don't understand and I have been talking about. But yes, there is serious and noticeable improvement and there is hope that this thing can be brought to an end. But the Nigerian army or the armed forces uh, must be equipped properly. Yes, talking about noticeable improvement, Nigeria has improved in ranking in the Global Terror Index. We're now ranked at number six, most terrorized country in the world, an improvement from number four, that position we occupied 
since 2017. What's your comment on that? And do you think that that index also takes into cognizance the menace of what we've called banditry in this country? Or do you think it's too focused on the Boko Haram um, Iswap menace and not taking into cognizance what's happening in the Northwest, for instance? Well, the truth of the matter is that there is, an, there is tremendous, there is a noticeable improvement in uh, what the, the armed forces are doing in order to address the security challenges. Even the issue of banditry, uh, even though it's not over yet, but the, the, the Nigerian armed forces are after them, unlike before, where that they are the ones that you know, come for or after the Nigerian uh, armed uh, forces. Uh, so that rating also is not something that uh, I particularly or think that is uh, something that it can be used to judge or to, to, to evaluate the performance. Because we see it on the ground. What we see on the ground is our judgment, not uh, what people will sit down in a hotel and collect uh, data and then uh, publish it as uh, what you call now terrorist global terrorist index. Not that uh, it doesn't work in some places, but it is not true. I don't take these figures seriously, especially knowing in Nigeria that where do you get the figures from anyway? These people don't even go anywhere. They come here, stay in a hotel and collect data and talk to people on the phone and then put their reports together and say Nigeria is number so, so, so on it. That is not uh, true to me. Uh, I, I always, we are always on the ground. We know what is going on. We see what is going on. If there is improvement, there is improvement. If there is no improvement, there is no improvement. But uh, the, our situation in Nigeria now is, everybody can say, see it, is, there is a lot of improvement, uh, especially in Borno State or, or the Northeast, where we are hard hit with uh, this issue of terrorism. Now, we are, uh, for example, my, from Maiduguri to my, my, my local government in those days, you cannot travel on your own, you have to uh, get escort. But these days, uh, from if the morning breaks in, in the morning, the, they do their, small, uh, their usual routine checkup of to, to make sure that the terrorists do not plant bombs. And people go their way. So they say there's improvement. As I said, if the Nigerian army and the other security agencies are giving what they need, they will get it done. Uh, those uh, figures that you read, uh, so to me, it really doesn't uh, uh, tally or, or means that... Um, that is what is on, actually on ground. Let me ask you re about the recent attack on the deputy governor of KB States, which was a very daring attack. Yes. What's your take on that attack? Yeah. And also the killing of about 63 vigilante members. What's your take on those attacks? You're on the ground. Tell us more. Well, I'm more concerned about what happened to the 63 vigilante that were ambushed and killed by the bandits. Uh, the issue of banditry in, um, in, the, in the Northwest is a little bit complicated because it's getting down to like it's a, it's, it's a, it's a war between the Hausa and the Fulani. The Fulani herders and uh, the Hausa farmers, the farmers are the, the Hausas. This, this now is turning into like a tribal war uh, between them. Uh, so that that is uh, very unfortunate. And as for the the incidents where the <coughs> the, the deputy governor was attacked, it's also very uh, unfortunate. But uh, and and we thank God that he didn't nothing uh, happen to him. But it it goes out to send uh, a signal of how daring these people uh, can be the bandits. And I'm beginning to, uh, initially, I, I didn't understand the situation, but I now, I, I develop interest to know, uh, especially after reading the interview granted by one of the bandits leader in uh, Delhi Trust last time, I can now understand that it is not only about robbing people of their uh, cattle and um, heads, but it has something to do with uh, what he, he said that uh, blaming the, the Hausa farmers uh, for killing their people without justification. And then they, they always retaliate uh, in order, and they say they took up arms in order to defend their, their people from the cattle rustlers. And uh, they were complaining that they are dealing with two groups. 
One are the cattle rustlers that come to rope them of their, uh, you know, their cattle. And then the other one is uh, Hausa uh, group farmers that uh, always uh, <clears throat> go after them, claiming that they are, they are, they are uh, uh, cattle, uh, you know, stray into their farms. So it is becoming, uh, to me, a, a matter of concern. And uh, I think the government needs to really uh, uh, sit the two groups and uh, get to the root of the matter and address it. It is not by uh, that of the bandits there now. Uh, it's, uh, it's not by just uh, sending army to deal with them. I think it's more uh, has to do with getting the Fulanis and the houses in that axis to sit down and, and sort things out. But, but the good thing is that if the, there is the will, there will definitely be the way because they have a, a hierarchy and leadership hierarchy in, both in the Fulani uh, 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 tribe and also the houses. So uh, that way is the best to go in order to get to address this matter. Because like if they attack the bandits who are now mostly Fulanese, the Fulanese will now uh, retaliate, especially uh, fighting the Yansaka, they call them, and that is the vigilante, who are predominantly, uh, uh, you know, the houses or the people from uh, the other tribes, especially in Zuru, uh, the Zuru people. Uh, also another tribe in, uh, in, in Kebi that uh, form a group they call the Sakai, the uh, young Sakai, to address, to fight the Fulanese that they consider as uh, bandits. It's, it's, uh, I am just understanding the, the, the issues recently when I develop interest. Since I'm from the Northeast, I know more of uh, the terrorist activities, the Boko Haram, but I, 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 I recently developed interest and find out what is going on and how to possibly address the matter. There is the need for the leadership of the houses in that zone and uh, the Fulanis to, to sit down and, and uh, sort things out. I think if that is done, actually we will only be now dealing with the issue of cattle rustlers and then the issue of uh, uh, farmers um, hiders will actually be resolved because we have been living since since those days together. Okay, Senator, um, just before we go, what's your position on the controversial yeah. section 84, subsection 12, requiring uh, public office holders who are interested in political uh, positions uh, to resign even before the uh, primaries uh, in the party? I know the Senate threw it out, but I wanted uh, your uh, position. In other words, the, the, the Senate rejected the uh, president's uh, recommendation that that particular clause should be removed from the electorate. But where do you stand in the matter? Well, I think to me, I'm surprised because it seems there's uh, some kind of misunderstanding or um, misinterpretation of what, the, of what that section intends to, uh, to be. What the, inten uh, the, the intention of that section uh, was, to my understanding, uh, to stop uh, taking advantage of the delegates' uh, uh, situation or, or, or kind of uh, election membership. The, some governors or some states would take advantage of their uh, the position to incorporate many of the government appointees as delegates to be to participate in convention just like other delegates that were elected from their either their ward or state or local government so what that section is saying is if you are a government employee then unless you, 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 you participate democratically. You cannot, by virtue of your position, be a national delegate or to be elected as a delegate. Not that um, you will not participate in elections or elective uh, position. Like, uh, if you want to be, a, to be a senator, while you are working as a government a, 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 a appointee, you cannot, that is what the law intends to address. You cannot go uh, into, to, you cannot go and elect yourself or cast your vote 
as a delegate because you are an employee. But of course you can uh, participate in, in, in the primaries to become senatorial candidate. Then you resign by the constitutional requirement 30 days to the election. So that section 84 to, is intended to exclude government appointees to be delegates or to be elected delegates. And if you want to be a delegate, then that means you have to relinquish your position or appointment in government. But the whole thing has been misinterpreted because the constitution is very clear that it is 30 days to election time that you, 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 you resign uh, your position. And it is the, the same constitution says any law that contradicts uh, the, the constitution is null and void to the extent of that contradiction. So I don't think uh, there is a big deal uh, there. At worst, I think the, uh, it may require some kind of judicial interpretation. But for us in the Senate, that was what it was intended to uh, do. Okay. Because in some states, you can see that the governor, uh, like, uh, let me give you an example of Kano. Kano is one of the largest states or Lagos. The governor, if he wants, he can appoint 40 commissioners, uh, advisors, and all that, and they become delegates. So you find out that Lagos can come with the number more of uh, non-elected delegates, more than the one that were elected uh, through the uh, uh, through the electoral process of the party. Well, Dr. No, we'd like to thank you very much, uh, Senator Ali Ndume, for joining us today on The Morning Show. Thank you very much indeed.